I go by the name Ruby, a 26-year-old single woman without a full-time job. Since my middle school years, I've tended to keep to myself quite a bit. I went to high school, but I dropped out, so I only have a middle school education. Since then, I've been living with my parents, working part-time jobs, and taking on work from online postings. I have an older brother named James, who's three years older than me, and he's the complete opposite of me. Good at sports, lots of friends, and the so-called outgoing type. My brother didn't want people to know he had a sister like me. He never brought friends home, and even if I happened to run into him and his friends at the convenience store, he'd ignore me. I thought it couldn't be helped and considered it like someone else's problem. Once my brother started college and moved out to live on his own, I stopped worrying about such things. Then there was talk of my brother getting married. He would be turning 29. It wasn't surprising. Later, it was decided that my brother would bring his fiancée to our parents' house. Since I was home that day, I decided to join them. Dad, Mom, I'm home, I announced as my brother arrived on time. When he saw me sitting with our parents, he looked confused for a moment. Sorry to intrude. His fiancée entered the house, seemingly unaware of my brother's attitude. Then looking at me, she said, Hi, and looked puzzled. I could tell from her eyes that she was asking my brother, Who is this? He probably hadn't told her about me. Thank you for coming all this way. I'm James's mother, this is his father. My mother introduced only herself and my father. The fiancé seemed satisfied and bowed politely but still looked puzzled. My father didn't follow up on my behalf. My parents have always been harsh with me, who couldn't live up to my accomplished brother. When we were young, they'd say things like, Your brother can do it, why can't you? as if it was part of our education. But it changed as we grew older. Eventually, I was even called a money-sucking leech. It seemed that my parents were planning to ignore me at this meeting too. I'll go and get some more drinks. As my mother stood up to leave, she whispered in my ear, Why are you here? Go back to your room. I had attended this meeting because I wanted to get along with my family in my own way but it seemed to have backfired. Still, I couldn't just leave, so I stayed put. My brother's fiancée introduced herself as Emma. She was the same age as me, 26, but a beautiful woman with a refined atmosphere, giving off a vibe that I shouldn't casually talk to her. My brother seemed a bit annoyed. He probably didn't like me being there. He introduced the woman to our father and mother, but he didn't talk to me at all. It felt like a ghost. When the conversation about the marriage was over, casual chatter naturally started, but my brother still acted like I didn't exist. Then James asked, Um, what do you usually do, Ruby? Before I could answer, my brother interrupted, Wait, Emma, you don't need to talk to her. That's what he said clearly. Emma looked a bit surprised. That's right, don't worry about it, my mother chimed in. Yeah, don't worry about it, she's just a stranger with a blood relation. When my father said that, something inside me ended. A stranger, huh? I thought so, reconciliation was impossible from the start. That's how the meeting ended as if it didn't matter whether I was there or not. Soon after, my brother and Emma got married and started building a house to live in together. My brother works at a famous company after graduating from college. He's still in his 20s, but his income seems good. Emma is going to be a stay-at-home wife and has already quit her job. Around the time my brother's house was completed, we received an invitation to a housewarming party. It would be held with a limited number of guests, including Emma's relatives and my brother's bosses. My mother was anxious, saying, Oh, it's already finished, time flies, we need to prepare a housewarming gift. What should we get? My father said, 
We're family, so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And he casually turned over the invitation. Only my father and mother's names were on the invitation. My name wasn't there. My mother seemed to have noticed but asked, Ruby is coming too, right? I wondered what she meant. At the meeting they had introduced me in such a horrible way. It's fine if I'm not invited, I declined, but my mother insisted. No you're coming, I'll make arrangements. So, I ended up going to the party. On the day of the party, it suddenly started raining. My parents and I took a taxi to my brother's house. My brother and his wife didn't come out to the front yard because of the rain, and welcomed their guests at the entrance. As soon as we arrived at my brother's house, my mother said to me, You pay for the taxi, and got out of the car with my father first, without umbrellas. They both hurried toward the entrance, so that's why I thought there was quite a distance between my brother's house and ours. I thought it was extravagant to take a taxi. I was the one called to pay for the car. After I paid, I ran towards the entrance, and Emma asked me, Who are you? I had only met Emma once before. Maybe she forgot me, I thought so, and introduced myself. I'm Ruby, James's sister, but she said with a smile. Ah, the high school dropout, neat. We didn't invite the parasite living off a parent. Emma said this casually with a smile. My brother, who had just returned from showing someone in, came out too. He said to me with disdain, Huh, why are you here? Hey James, I told you not to invite her, why is she here? Well I don't know either, my brother didn't want to invite me after all, and Emma changed her attitude once she knew about me. Actually, she's worse than my brother and parents, would it have been better if I didn't come? I asked my brother cautiously. Yeah you're a stranger because of your low education. Actually, not finishing high school doesn't even count as an education right? Could you please leave the property quickly? Emma followed up on what my brother said. Like she was siding with him. Her expression remained calm the whole time. Which was truly terrifying. Understood, I turned on my heel. The taxi from earlier was gone, and since we weren't on a main street, it seemed difficult to find another one. I didn't have an umbrella, I trudged along, getting drenched in the rain. I could hear Emma's laughter from behind. After a while, I returned home. My parents came back, looking like they had a good time. They saw my face and asked, Why did you leave suddenly? Couldn't even call a taxi for the way back? You're so useless, my mother complained, as if it were a matter of course. Sorry, I suddenly had a stomach ache, I lied to cover it up. For such a reason, you left on your own, you're hopeless, make sure to give the gift later, you're an adult, my father told me. Speaking of which, I had prepared something to give at the party, but I brought it back without giving it. I wanted to send it by mail, but I didn't know the address. I could ask my parents but the atmosphere was awkward. So I decided to contact my brother. I want to send a gift. Can you tell me the address? This was the only reply from my brother. I don't give my address to strangers, right? I let out a sigh. Is it really fun to start dominance over me in private? Not just embarrassing to introduce to others, I couldn't help but be amazed. It might not be just my brother who's sending these messages. Maybe Emma is also typing and laughing out loud. Either way, it's ridiculous. I gave up on sending a congratulatory gift with the meaning of my brother and his wife in their housewarming party. I decided to leave home. I realized I couldn't get along with my family anymore and decided to live on my own. I didn't have a full-time job, but I had some savings from my part-time work. I was able to rent a room for living alone. Since it wasn't much to live on, I decided to try streaming videos in my spare time. I was already interested in watching streams as a hobby and was good at finding trends among popular streamers and ways to increase views.
When I started doing it myself, I made tens of thousands a month. The amount grew, covering my living expenses. I decided to invest the money I wasn't using, the investments went well, and I decided to try running a small company importing and selling goods. I was busy in a good way and fulfilled every day. I didn't have a family that would complain about me using the computer all the time. A few months later, I received a call from my parents who hadn't contacted me since I left home. We want you to help James financially, they said. Why? I asked genuinely curious. I wondered what could have happened to the person who just built a new house. My parents slowly began to explain the situation. My brother apparently held frequent parties after building his new house, interacting with various people such as bosses, executives, clients, and Emma's acquaintances. Among them, someone proposed an investment opportunity, and my brother ended up trusting the proposal. He wasted a large sum of money, lured by the promise of making big returns in just a few months. I was amazed. My brother had a decent job, so if he had just kept working hard, he wouldn't have made such a mistake. Who is the person who recommended the investment? Isn't it a scam? I asked. No, it's not. It's one of Emma's acquaintances. My parents seem to completely trust Emma. How much do you need? She was shocked when I asked. It was an amount that a company employee couldn't easily pay. Is that really the amount my brother needs as a loan? I asked my parents hesitantly, and as expected, they gave me the answer I feared. We were also introduced to the same investment. My parents hesitated before responding. I can't come up with that much money so easily. Sorry, I tried to hang up the phone, but they clung on, saying, We're your real family. Help us out in times like these, real family. Too little, too late. Sorry, but I'm busy and I'm a stranger to you, right? With that I hung up the phone. Later on, somehow they found out, and my parents' and brothers' families showed up. The location was the office of the company I run. I was in a business meeting at the time. My secretary informed me, There are guests here for you, President. I don't have any other appointments. Who are they? I shuddered. I apologized to the business partner I was meeting with and excused myself for a moment. When I went to the reception area, there stood my pregnant sister-in-law, Emma, my brother and my parents. You're running a company, huh? Well, it's much smaller than where I work. My brother smirked and looked around the office. Who are you? I asked, pretending I didn't know them. What's with the attitude? My brother shouted, losing his temper. My mother intervened and explained. We talked about this before, but we need your support. You're running a company, so you can help us out, right? My mother shamelessly asked for money as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Yeah, it's an important time for our family. Emma is about to give birth. The child's growth isn't good, so we need to see a good doctor. Please, Ruby. My father and Emma chimed in acting as if it was my duty to pay off everyone's debts. Employees occasionally walked by the reception area, glancing over with concern. Wanting to get rid of them as quickly as possible, I said, Please leave. You're causing a disturbance. My brother exploded with anger again. What? We're a disturbance. We came all the way here, and that's how you talk to your family, he yelled. The employees passing by stopped in their tracks, facing them. My brother started to make a scene. Do you all know this girl dropped out of middle school? She was a shut-in, no neat. He seemed intent on humiliating me. If I didn't give him the money however, the employees responded with words my brother didn't expect. We know everyone knows the president's background, me too. The president hires many people from similar situations. Is there a problem? My brother, who usually socializes only with highly educated and high-income people, seemed caught off guard and stammered.
Ah. Uh. Instead my father said. What a pathetic company. Just a gathering of needs. My brother chimed in. Exactly, companies that do business with a place like this can't be any good either. He yelled loudly. At that moment, the president of the company I was meeting with, who had been waiting in the reception room, came out. He must have heard the shouting. My brother's face went blank and then turned pale as he looked at the man. He lowered his gaze. What's wrong James? Emma asked. My brother whispered to Emma. Idiot, don't say my name. But it was too late. James, James, oh it's you. The company president walked straight up to my brother and looked at his face. You're the guy who always falls Mr. Long, the division manager, right? We owe a lot to your company. His company was also a client of my brother's company. My brother was sweating profusely from every pore on his face. Uh, um, that's, oh, I guess I'm not memorable since we're not a D-in company, my brother mumbled. When the president threw my brother's words back at him, my brother went, oh, and froze up. My father, mother and Emma also sensed the trouble and fell silent. I apologized to the president again. Ignoring them, I'm sorry for taking up your valuable time. I'll ask them to leave. Are you sure? I have time today, so I don't mind waiting. You can prioritize talking with your family. No, they're not my family. I glanced at my parents' and brother's family as I said this. They're complete strangers. After that, my parents' and brother's family were kicked out of the company. Maybe they were stunned by the exchange with the company president, but they left quietly. As for how my job was exposed, I was curious, so I looked into it and found out that Emma was the cause. She had a friend who was well informed about investment related information and always had her antenna up. There was a young woman in her 20s who was making a name for herself as a talented trader and company owner. Emma was surprised when she saw a photo in the media and realized that this woman was her husband's sister, who she had heard was a middle school dropout and a meet. Emma told my brother and parents about this and suggested they ask me for money. Since I was busy during the day and didn't answer the phone and I didn't call them back after they asked me for money, they came to my company. I had been treating them like complete strangers, so I decided not to get involved with them anymore but I couldn't help but look into Emma. I was curious about her friend being involved in my parents' and brother's financial failures. That friend was Emma's ex-boyfriend. In fact, they seemed to still be involved. By the way, the child in Emma's womb wasn't my brother's, but the child of that investor. No way, my brother was devastated. It's natural to be upset since everything had been a lie. Furthermore, it seems she had been extracting money from several other men under the guidance of her ex-boyfriend. Of course, my brother and Emma ended up getting a divorce. Emma is now under police custody along with her ex-boyfriend. However, the lost money won't be returned anytime soon. Ever since the incident at my company, my brother's position at his workplace worsened. In his 20s, he was transferred to a so-called Windows side department and eventually resigned. He couldn't work there for long and eventually resigned. Possibly irritated by the financial failure and trouble surrounding my brother, my father got into trouble when the president witnessed him losing his temper with a subcontractor at work. After investigating his work attitude, he was fired. Apparently he had been saying things like, junior high or high school graduates are worthless, and, if you didn't graduate from a certain university or higher, you're not a real person, similar to what he used to say to me. So both my brother and father ended up losing their jobs. The family, or rather former family, whose income decreased, still contacts me, saying, let's live together. By the way, I had them banned from entering my company's building so they can't force their way in anymore. With everything that happened, we're still family, right? 
The unemployed trio tries various tactics to cling to me, but my answer is always the same. I don't know you, you're complete strangers to me. I have no intention of giving any other response in the future.